If you recall from the last video, we had talked about two ways in which the term average is used. One is when we have, for example, an average of numbers. We add up the, the numbers in the list and divide by the number that were there. For instance, if there are five numbers, we add up the five numbers and divide by five. The other approach is the approach that you typically used with velocity. Average velocity was the change in position, the position at the end minus the position at the beginning, divided by the change in time. Uh, and the thing is, is if you think about it, these don't seem to be the same at all. Um, it does turn out that they are the same, and let's see why that, that's the case, all right? in, at least in the case of velocity. So remember that velocity from section 4, 6 was the average velocity was the change in position divided by the change in time. We also talked about this back in, in section in chapter uh, 2, at the near the beginning of chapter 2. All right, and now let's take a look at, at how this, this would work. All right, if we drop an object from some height, okay, assuming we're at the Earth's surface or um, close to the Earth's surface when we drop it, then the velocity is given by negative 32 um, feet per uh, 32t feet per second. Okay, so let's calculate it. Let's calculate the velocity in two ways, or the average velocity. All right, I'm going to calculate the average velocity over this interval by using first off by using that formula. All right, it would be um, one over in this case six minus 1 times the integral from 1 to 6 of the velocity. Okay, that's how I calculate the average value of the function. The velocity is a function just like anything else. And so this would be um, 1 fifth integral from 1 to 6 of negative 32 t dt. All right, and when I integrate this, I have 1 fifth all right, and, and what I'm going to, I want to write something in here that's extra that we've said we don't really need, but, but I want to just put it in here for illustration purpose. This would be negative 1 16th, or sorry, negative, excuse me, 16 t squared. The integral of t is t squared over 2, and the 2 goes into the negative 32, negative 16 times. From 1, oops, I the, left out the thing that I wanted to put in, plus some constant of integration. All right, and we'd evaluate it from 1 to 6. Now notice here what this is going to be. What this is, well, I'll, we'll calculate it in just one minute, uh, and maybe it'll be easier to illustrate then. This is going to be, all right, negative 16 times 6 squared plus c minus negative 16 times 1 squared plus plus c. Okay. Obviously you can see the c's cancel off, but if you look at this right here, this is going to be s of 6, all right, the position function at 6, because you integrate velocity, you get the position minus s of 1, the position function at 1, because again, the integral of velocity function is position function. So this part here is the change in, in position, the change in position. This 5, this 5, that's what all of this is. This is the change in position. This 5 here is the change in time. So really, we're calculating change in position divided by the change in time. And now let's see, what will this be? All right, this will be um, six, uh, 36 times 16 is a negative 576, all right, minus, all right, 16 times, negative 16 times 1 is negative 16. The C's, of course, subtract off, all right, and this is all over 5, and so that'll be negative 576 plus 16 is negative 5, 60 over 5, and that's negative 112, and this would be in feet per second. So the average velocity is it. But notice we still calculate it, all right, even though this is the average velocity as we as we defined it in the last video, all right, but this is still the change in position over change in time, just like it has, has been in, in other discussions. 
we'll look at a few more applications of this in, in the next two videos.